it's it's kind of like if you've been following, I suspect you have, because you follow a lot of stuff, the LDL and the cholesterol story. You lower the LDL and you have less heart disease. The same thing. If you have a high PTAU-217, and the only reason I get it is because you have a familial pattern of Alzheimer's, you have an APOE4 or a polygenic risk that's increased. Anyway, you're at higher risk, you get the PTAU-217, and if you're relatively young, you're in the 40s or 50s, you've got a 20-year lead time. Now, when you start to lose weight, exercise, have a better diet that's you know not pro-inflammatory, sleep better with high quality deep sleep, those markers come down. It's remarkable. It's modifiable. And so we should be able to prevent Alzheimer's because we have brain clocks. We have these markers. We have even health span clocks from these proteins in our blood now. So you cannot just use these clocks to tell about risk and markers, but then you can use them to see if the interventions are working. And one of the exciting things, I, I'm, I know you're aware of this, but these GLP-1 drugs like Ozempic and Munjaro, Zepbound, they are being tested for Alzheimer's in people who are not overweight in large trials, which we'll have in the beginning of next year. That may work because these agents, these drugs, markedly reduce inflammation in the brain and in the body. And we haven't had any drugs like that previously. So if we can control the inflammation process, and these drugs, as well as other gut hormones, are going to do that for us, we're going to have a way, not just lifestyle factors, but in the high-risk people, to bring down the markers, the metrics of the aging brain, the sick brain that's emerging towards Alzheimer's, years before people ever get uh, mild cognitive impairment. 